We tore down a lot of devices throughout 2020, and some of them turned out to be little miracles of thoughtful, repairable design. Let's look at the top five, or five-ish, most repairable devices we saw in this very broken year. Apple released five iPhones in 2020. All of them received a six out of 10 on our repairability scale, but one of them stands out a little bit. The 2020 version of the iPhone SE has the same high points as the iPhone 12 models that came out later, but there are some key differences. The display still comes off first, making screen replacements easy and fast, and the screen is an LCD, not a fragile OLED, so it'll be pretty cheap to replace once the parts are available. And the battery can be replaced easily thanks to wonderful pull tabs. Touch ID still requires a delicate transplant, and True Tone will disappear with a replacement screen. It also gets low marks for non-standard screws and a glass back that takes a full teardown to replace. But what's special about the iPhone SE is that it's not a totally brand new phone. It's based on the iPhone 8, so you can swap the cameras, the SIM tray, the Taptic Engine, and the microphones and sensors between them. So while other iPhones were heading in a concerning direction, the iPhone SE 2020 was something of a slight fixable relief this year. Another small improvement from Apple came with the Apple Watch Series 6. We noticed this year that it opens like a book, and that there was slightly more room to work inside. But what got us excited was something missing from the watch, a force touch gasket. Since Apple gave up on that whole two kinds of touch idea, that tricky, stubborn part is gone. It still takes a gentle hand, but it's a little bit easier now to get inside this little wrist computer. Before we dug into the PlayStation 5, itself, we got to know its new DualSense controller. Considering that people spend hours pushing, pressing, and yeah, sometimes throwing these things, repairability is key. Luckily you can get into the PS5's new controller, you just have to know where to look for the screws. Once you're in, the battery is easier to remove than in most smartphones. No glue, just one little cable to pull it out. You can remove and swap many of its components, but the charging port and the joysticks are, sadly, soldered on. Still, there's a good chance you can fix the malfunctioning DualSense, and that's a good thing. The hard part of owning an Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, at least right now, is just finding and buying one. It's easy to get into both the PS5 mothership and the Series X refrigerator. And once you're in, you can pretty handily swap out the fan, replace the power supplies, and even clean out the heat sinks. The only real sticking point is disks and storage. Neither console lets you replace their optical drive without some tricky board swapping and soldering. And at the moment, you're going to have a tricky time replacing your Xbox or PS5 internal storage. But for what most people will need to fix over their console's lifetime, these beefy but cool gaming boxes score a 7 out of 10. Samsung's Galaxy Buds Live, which are really the Galaxy Beans, because even Samsung thinks so, prove that totally wireless headphones don't have to be the environmental disaster of, say, an AirPod. These little guys notch an 8 out of 10 because you can open them without a scalpel, don't need special tools to disassemble them, and you can replace the battery and other individual parts. There is some glue, and you have to go slowly and delicately when you're working on these tiny speakers, but fixing or swapping out the battery is far from impractical. That wraps up our roundup of the most repairable devices we tore down in 2020. For more teardowns and repair news, make sure you like and subscribe. We'll have many more videos coming soon.